Hey folks, Harvey Cthulhu here, asking you to please push the button that will release me from my containment field and set me free to destroy your universe. But if you won't do that, please hit the subscribe button and be sure to push the notification bell as well. And if you send a super thanks, please put Harvey sent me somewhere in the message so that Doomcock will be shamed into giving me the wampum. That greedy bastard, he honks it all for himself. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and now on to the video. Greetings, my friends. I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, broadcasting from my hidden base at the center of the Earth. And today, my friends, today the sun seems brighter, the air smells fresher, and when I awakened this morning, inexplicably, woodland animals singing merry songs dressed me as I rose to meet the day. I wondered why everything seemed so fresh and renewed. I looked around to make sure I wasn't in a Massengill commercial, but no! There was no field of daisies to spin around in, no commercial production crews, and no douche in sight. Unless, of course, you count the Skull of Calderon. Ha de ha ha, it is to laugh, you swaggering overbearing tin-plated dictator with delusions of douchehood. So I was puzzled until I checked my news feed, and lo and behold, there it was at last, ladies and gentlemen, the truth about Disney and Star Wars. Not a rumor, not conjecture, but analysis in one of the most prominent financial publications in the world, Forbes magazine, and... When I read the title, my faith that there is a god was renewed when I read the headline, Disney Star Wars box office profits fail to cover the cost of buying Lucasfilm. <laughs> Uh-oh, but we had seen all sorts of propaganda articles before the big shareholders meeting, before the idiotic vote for Iger's status quo that caused Disney's stock to drop immediately, all this stuff that Star Wars had been very profitable. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, was Iger bullshitting us? Could that be? According to Forbes, it certainly could be, Harvey Cthulhu. Yes, my friends, you know the saying, get woke, go broke. Well, Disney isn't broke exactly, but it's not prospering all that much either. And it gives me immense satisfaction knowing that Disney hasn't profited from the cultural vandalism and destruction they've inflicted on Star Wars with substandard scripts, woke agendas, and lifeless wooden characters. At least in this uncertain world, it does appear to still be the case that, as Harvey puts it, The wages of woke is broke. Amen. See, this is what you assholes get for destroying Star Wars, Disney. In your arrogance, you think you can just endlessly piss in the faces of your customers, giving them woke propaganda and extremist messaging in lieu of the entertainment they crave? Well, here's a big fuck you right from Forbes. After years and years of ramming this Disney princess bullshit down our throats, we fans have now developed a finely tuned gag reflex and an allergy to the concentrated D-E-I-E-S-G-M-O-U-S-E garbage that you're selling. Now we're seeing that despite all your claims, the truth is, Disney, all of this woke crap has cost you big time along with your own production incompetence. So you want to know what justice looks like, ladies and gentlemen? Let's take a glance at what Forbes is reporting. In this latest article, they write, quote, Box office profits generated by Disney Star Wars movies have fallen $2.8 billion short of covering the media giant's purchase of the sci-fi saga's creator, Lucasfilm, according to analysis of recently filed financial statements. Disney bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion in 2012 and soon gave the green light to a new trilogy of Star Wars movies which teamed up rising stars Daisy Ridley and John Boyega with Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and the late Carrie Fisher who headlined the original movies more than 30 years earlier." Unquote. Holy hole in the wallet! Are they kidding? I always thought that Disney lost money on Star Wars movies, that maybe they hadn't made back the $4 billion, but they fell short by $2.8 billion? 
Shit on a light stick, Batman. That's not just falling short. That's falling long. They haven't even made half of their $4 billion back? Hashtag dang it, Bob. This is what Disney investors voted for when they elected to side with Iga in the Disney proxy war. Disney investors said, yes, we love losing money. You know that whole losing money thing? Sign us up for more of it. We have every confidence in the board that lost the company over a hundred billion dollars in market cap. Oh yes, keep up the good work. Jolly good show. Well, apparently, Skull of Calderon, those shareholders are having a little bit of buyer's remorse this morning after the markets opened, as the stock had taken a dip as of the time of this video from $118.13 on Thursday, April 11th, all the way down to $114.07 this morning. Did the Forbes article have anything to do with that? Well, it didn't help. That much is clear. In their article, they further spell out the ugly truth about Disney's Star Wars, quote, Last month, Disney released a 67-page presentation singing the praises of its chief executive officer, Bob Iger, in a bid to convince stockholders to side with him in a battle with activist investors. One of its key boasts was about the supposedly spellbinding return on investment generated by the franchises that Disney acquired under Iger. The presentation gives the impression that Disney's Star Wars trilogy generated a 2.9 times return on the purchase of Lucasfilm as that figure is presented next to a timeline of key events in the production company's history. They include the release of the Star Wars movies and its acquisition of Lucasfilm, which is the only milestone marked with a star. Adding to this impression is the fact that at the other end of the timeline is the Star Wars logo and a photo of the Mandalorian with his little green friend. However, buried in the fine print is the revelation that the purchase price of Lucasfilm isn't even included in the return on investment calculation. Instead, it is purely based on the box office performance of Disney's Star Wars trilogy, its two spin-off movies, merchandise, DVD, and Blu-ray sales. As revealed, the methodology is questionable, as Disney based the return on investment on the revenue generated by the movies, merchandise, DVDs, and Blu-rays, rather than the profit they made, as it should have done. Using the revenue, rather than the profit, artificially inflates the result as it doesn't factor in the costs that Disney had to pay out. This is obvious, folks. I mean, clearly, I'm not a business major or anything like that, but you have to factor in the cost of the damn thing before you actually figure out how much it made or lost, yes? The article continues, quote, even this wasn't enough for the media giant, so it also forecast the revenue that it expected the Star Wars movies, merchandise, DVDs, and Blu-rays to generate over a 10-year period and base the calculation on that too. In other words, Disney hasn't actually received the revenue that it used to calculate the return on its investment. <laughs> and so, geez, can you believe this shit? Oh my god. Is this like running a con on the investors or what? In summary, despite seeming to do so, Disney's presentation doesn't actually reveal whether its Star Wars movies have covered the cost of its purchase of Lucasfilm. There may be good reason for this. Analysis of more than 800 pages of company filings has revealed that the cost of making Disney's five Star Wars movies hit a total of $2.1 billion, peaking at $567.3 million on The Force Awakens. However, that's just the start. The article then goes on to analyze, in excruciating detail, all of the various UK tax incentive schemes and other accounting hoops that Disney has used to throw up a smokescreen of profitability for the investors. But the sad truth of the matter for Iger is, Star Wars has not been a golden goose for Disney, it's more goose shit than gold. And the louder Disney crows about it, the more suspicious you should be. All I can say is, Disney refused to give fans what they wanted. They wanted the delicious birthday cake of the original trilogy, and instead they got a green bean souffle of a sequel. Disney doesn't want to give you pleasure. They want to give you a lecture about intersectional feminism and how important it is to love gay stuff and men suck. I think that about sums it up. 
Pretty much Harvey Cthulhu. Pretty much. Hollywood accounting is a tricky thing to unravel, but Forbes has pulled back the curtain with this article, and it turns out the Wizard of Blahs has no clothes. Or something like that. Therefore, rejoice people, turns out destroying pop culture comes with a cost. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha, 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 ha,